In this video, I want to talk to you about the chain rule. So the question is, how do we differentiate composite functions? And these are functions that look like f of g of x, so where one function is stuck inside of another. So the process is straightforward. If we think of our function h of x as a composite function f of g of x, then h prime of x will be the derivative of g, which is g prime of x, times the derivative of f, f prime, and that's evaluated at g of x. So if we use our Leibniz notation, sometimes that's helpful. So if we think of our function y equals f of u, and u is g of x, and we see that is the same thing as f of g of x, just written differently, then the chain rule could be written as dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. And even though we really can't do this, you can see that it's almost like you can cancel the du's. Right, so our basic rule of thumb for using the chain rule is to differentiate inside out. And so let's look at an example. Suppose I want to find dy dx for the function y equals sine x squared. First thing I do realize is that that is a composite function. There is an x squared function stuck inside of the sine function. So when I take my derivative dy dx, I'm taking the derivative of the inside function, x squared, which is 2x. And then I'm taking the derivative of the outside function, sine. Its derivative is cosine. And remember that we still evaluate that at whatever was inside. So that's at x squared. So again, the inside gives me the derivative of 2x. And the outside gives me the derivative of cosine x squared. And so that problem's done. Here's another example. Suppose I want to find dy dx for the function y equals e to the x squared. Again, we notice that this is a composite function. It's x squared stuck inside of e to the x. So when I take my derivative, the derivative of the inside, again, is 2x. And the derivative of the outside is e to the power of x squared because we keep the inside function the same after we take the derivative of the outside function. Another example is suppose I had the function y is equal to cosecant e to the x. Again, we have a composite function because e to the x is an inside function. I take the derivative of e to the x, that's e to the x. And now I need to multiply by the derivative of cosecant. And remember the derivative of cosecant is minus cosecant cotangent. And notice that the arguments of those trig functions is still e to the x. That has not changed. I'm going to make an algebraic simplification. And notice that because that derivative had a minus sign, I was careful with the parentheses because I don't want that to look like I was subtracting that entity from e to the x. So this all had parentheses around it. Also notice that my arguments of my trig functions had parentheses around those. So it's clear that those are arguments of the trig functions, not functions outside by themselves. Let's simplify this a little bit, moving that minus sign out. If we do that, we get minus e to the x, cosecant e to the x, times cotangent e to the x.